Hey, what's up, everyone? Happy New Year. This is Michael again with Color Cubic. And I wanted to start this new year off proper by kicking out a new tutorial video. Now, in this video, what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a headphone cable utilizing a helix shape that'll essentially run along a spline path like we see here. Now, I actually attempted this tutorial before a couple of years back, and, you know, I just wasn't really happy with the end of result. Um, the process was way too complicated. It was way more complicated than it needed to be. And, you know, I figured after doing this a few times and after simplifying the process, it's probably time to give this tutorial the proper refresh it deserves. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into this. Now, I'm in Cinema 4D R16, but what's nice about this process is that Regardless of what version of Cinema 4D you're using, whether it's an earlier or later version, uh, this process will work the same. So you should be able to follow along verbatim if you'd like. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's come up here to our spline tab. Now I'm going to click and hold this, and I'm going to select a helix shape. Now I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, and with my Alt Option key selected, if you're on a Mac or PC, it should be Alt Option. Now click and hold that, and then with my mouse, I'm going to click and drag so I can rotate and get a little bit of a perspective on this. There we go. Now I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more. And now, over here in my Objects panel, with my Helix Spline selected, I'm going to come down to Start Radius and End Radius, and I'm going to change this from 200 centimeters to 25 centimeters. I'm going to do the same for both the start and end radius. And now I'm going to come to the end angle and I'm going to change this from 720 degrees to 10,000 degrees. So just a one and four zeros. And now I'm going to come down to the height and change this from 200 centimeters to 600 centimeters. Now if we zoom in here a little bit, we can see that our, uh, our helix cable, you know, it's long and it's, it's, uh, it's got enough coils in there, but it's looking a little bit wobbly and that's not really what we want. So we can fix this if we come down to our subdivision and we change this from 100 to 200. There we go. That looks a lot smoother. All right. So now that we've done that, let's come back up to our spline tab and let's click and hold that and we're going to select the circle spline. Now right off the bat, that circle spline looks way too big. So with our circle spline selected and our objects panel, I'm going to come down here to radius, and I'm going to change this from 200 centimeters to 10 centimeters. That looks a lot better. Let's click out of that. And now I'm going to come to our generator tab. Now click and hold this, and then select the sweep nerves. And now what we want to do is we just want to hold, if you're on a Mac, hold the command key. If you're on a PC, the control key. And select both the circle and helix splines. And now click and drag these and drop these into the sweep nerves. And there we go. So right away, we get this really nice helix cable. And that's cool and all, but we're not quite done yet. So now that we've done this, let's go ahead and click out of our perspective window. And we can do that if we come up here to this little box. Just check that. And now come over here to our top window, our top view, and click that same box. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our spline tab. And click and hold this. And I'm going to select the linear spline. Now, uh, for this instance, you can make whatever shape you want. I'm just going to create a really simple shape. Uh, just to give you an idea of how our helix cable is going to run along this spline that we create. So again, you can make this whatever shape you want, but I'm just going to keep it super simple. So kind of like a, a geometric S. And now that I've done that, I'm going to come back up here to my live selection tool. And I'm just going to fix a few things. Try to even it out a little bit. It doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, if it's not perfect, that's probably better because we want this to appear more organic than anything. 
So now that I've done that, I'm going to select these two center points on the spline. And now that they're selected, I'm going to right click and come to chamfer. And in chamfer, I want to come down to radius and I want to set it to 300 centimeters. So once you've done that, go ahead and click apply. And now it's made our spline a little more curvaceous. And now let's come back to our live selection tool and let's come back up here to our model tab. And now let's go ahead and drag our spline so it's more centered with our helix cable. Doesn't need to be perfect, but you know, just so it's overlapping. That looks good. So let's click out of that. And now what we want to do is we want to come to our, our uh, deformer tab and click and hold this and we want to come down to our spline wrap and select that. Now before we do anything you want to come down to our bounding box. Make sure that that's drop down. Let's come to the z-axis and let's increase this the length. That looks good. Could probably just be 700. And now what we want to do is we just want to drag this so our helix cable is right directly center of this spline wrap box. So now that we've done that, make sure our spline wrap is selected still. And now click and drag our spline and drop it in the spline window in our spline wrap. That's a lot of splines. <laughs> Sorry about that. But now that we've done that, let's go ahead and click and drag our spline wrap and drop it in our helix. And now let's go ahead and click out of our top view and let's click back into our perspective window. So right away, you can see this is looking a bit ugly. Like, what the heck is this? This isn't what we want. I mean, somebody might want this, but, you know, that's not what we want. So let's go ahead and fix this. It's a really easy fix. With our spline wrap selected, let's come down here to the axis, and we're going to change this from positive X to negative Z. And voila, there we go. So with our spline wrap selected still, we can drag this, and it drags along the spline that we created, that really simple linear spline. Now you'll notice right away, the dragging, it's inverted. You know, when you drag to the left, it goes to the right, and vice versa. And that's okay, just because uh, it'll make sense once we, uh, once we make our helix editable, which is what the next step is. So with our helix, uh, our helix spline selected, go ahead and press the C key. And that'll make this editable. And now I'm going to go ahead and just disable our sweep nerves. You can keep it active, but just come up here to this little green check and click that, and that'll disable it. And now what I want to do is I want to come over here to my point tab. And again, with my helix spline selected, because it's editable now, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select the end of this helix. And just select that point and make sure you have your live selection tool selected. Now select that point and just drag out. And just click away and I'm going to do the same thing on this end too. Click that end point and then drag out. And now let's come back to our objects panel and let's re-enable our sweep nerves. So just click that red X. And now you can see we've got this really nice helix cable with these elongated stems that we can add, like, you know, as this example shows, like a nice uh, quarter inch jack or, you know, whatever you want to add to the end of this. But if we zoom in here a little bit, we can, we can probably clean this up a little bit better because we're getting this weird, like, nasty crease right there. And, uh, you know, if you care about the quality of your work, that's probably not going to work for anyone. So let's go ahead and disable our sweep nerves again. So go ahead and come to the sweep nerves and just click that green X or that green check mark. And now let's come back down to our helix cable and let's come back up here. And we're just going to select this little piece right here, this little portion. 
And now what I want to do is I want to come to our move tool. So make sure that that's selected. And with this, uh, with this point selected, utilizing our move tool, hold the shift key down and we're just going to take this anchor and we're going to drag out just ever so slightly. And now go ahead and press the space bar and that'll uh, throw you back into the live selection tool. And I just want to examine this a little bit. Okay, go ahead and press the space bar again. And we just want to fix this a little bit. Whoops. Hold the shift key down too, so that you're not affecting the entire point. You're just affecting one of the anchors. And remember, we're doing this with our move tool, not in the live selection tool. So we can go ahead and just circle around. Hold the shift key again. You know, we're just going to eyeball this. It doesn't need to be perfect, but we can get pretty close. That looks pretty good. All right. And now I'm going to use the space bar and come back to my live selection tool, select this. And then I'm going to click the space bar again to go back to my move tool. And this time I'm not going to use the shift key. I'm just going to take these anchors and rotate this ever so slightly. And with the Alt Option key selected, I'm going to hold that and then click and drag with my mouse to rotate around. And then move these anchors a little bit more. Rotate around again, and that looks pretty good. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to press the space bar to tab out. And there we go. So right away, this looks pretty good. Like, I think this will look nice. So let's go ahead and go back to our sweep nerves and let's re-enable that. And look at that. That looks a lot cleaner. We're not getting that weird crease. We've got a nice shape. So let's go ahead and come back to our helix. I'm actually going to disable our sweep nerves again. And with our live selection tool selected, I'm just going to select this endpoint again. And I'm just going to drag this out a little bit more, just to give us some length. And let's go ahead and go back to our Move tool. And I'm just going to drag these anchor points out, just like that. And now let's go back to our Live Selection tool, deselect, and let's go back to our Sweep nerves and let's re-enable that. That looks a lot better. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a really simple process. So you can use this for anything if you want to make some headphones or, you know, if you're really into making, um, I don't know, like robots or whatever. You know, they always have these, uh, you know, these different types of cables. You have straight cables, you have helix cables, whatever you want to use it for. It's just a nice little aesthetic that you know, if you're really into modeling and uh, you want to make your objects look a little more realistic, you have to factor in that uh, you're dealing with a lot of different shapes. And, you know, what's nice about Cinema 4D is that you can create just really any shape you want. You just need to get creative and how to solve that problem. How to how do I create a really complicated shape? And, uh, you know, that can be utilized in whatever products I'm creating. So hopefully you found this useful. Um, if you have any questions or concerns about the, uh, about the process, go ahead and uh, leave your questions or comments about, um, about this process in the comments section, and I'll be sure to reply to you as uh, promptly as I can. Otherwise, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time in another tutorial. Thanks and see you soon. Bye.